We hate to see injuries, but you know who we hate more, Justin? This list of people that we're about to talk about. You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Andrew Chang and Justin Goddard. Hello and welcome to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, a show now on the Built-In Buffalo Network. My name is Andrew Chang and alongside me is my co-host Justin Goddard. Tonight, Justin and I are going to talk about an interesting topic. We're going to dive into our most hated Buffalo Bills players. And to be fair, this will consist of Buffalo Bills who have played fairly recently. So we're not going to do anything from the Jim Kelly era because we haven't really watched that kind of football. Well, at least I haven't. Uh, As always, you can find us on most social media and podcasting platforms and even on YouTube by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You can find our show as well as other amazing content and other amazing shows and podcasts, YouTube, all that good stuff by looking into the built-in Buffalo Podcasting Network. Definitely check them out. Let's break down some Bills-related news, but Justin, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. It's, It's been a pretty interesting week for me. Um... I got the pup next to me. Um, okay. She's had uh, surgery this week, so I've been doing a lot of sleeping mm. on the floor with her, making sure she doesn't jump on stuff and whatnot. And uh, if there's any interruption in the podcast tonight, I apologize. I got to make sure she's not going all American Ninja Warrior for the foreseeable future, probably about the next three months. But all things considering, it, right. it went well and. She's trying to bounce back too quick, so now we're on the uh, the containing her and, and keeping her relaxing phase, which is apparently more difficult. So, all things considered, I got well, a just... little impromptu setup so she can be next to me and I can keep an eye uh, keep an eye on her. I got Billy Buffalo back sure. here. I got the belt. Okay. What else do you need? Not much, and I mean. I mean, to my understanding, basically, wasn't her surgery kind of like two ACL tears? Uh, yeah. Um, so we we addressed one of them at the time being, but long story short, the the major issue outside of the ACL tear is that she basically had a kneecap that was never staying in place. So, oh my yeah. god, jeez, and. Uh, you know, to add to the list of ailments, uh, if I sound a little weird, I am feeling slightly under the weather, so I'm going to try my best to power through yeah. this episode. We're probably so, going to be putting this out a day late, but uh, boy, hey, life, life threw us some curveballs this week, so here we are. We're still getting the content yeah. out there, and thanks for tuning in. Yeah, so let's dive right into some Buffalo Bills related news. Um, The NFL approved some alternate color helmets beginning in 2022. So can we conclude that we'll see the early 2000 Bills helmet in the the, the 22 season? I personally didn't hate them that much, to be honest. I know some people were 50-50 on it, but I kind of like them. What about Uh, you? I'm fine. Give me the helmets. Um... As long as we're not doing like the full jerseys and everything, that that's like the uh, the quintessential the dark, uh, Drew Bledsoe, right? Like the the navy yeah, blue with the, the piping for no yeah. reason, and all that. I, every time I think mm. of that, I think of Drew Bledsoe, and I think of Marshawn Lynch with like shoulder pads. Well, I mean, he's bigger than me, so they'd be like out to here, but just like just right, right. Don't give me those, but I love. I Wasn't love this edition. Sorry, I cut you off. Uh, no, no, you're you're good. You're good. I'm just trying to think. Wasn't Reebok like making jerseys for the NFL yeah. at that time? Oh yeah. So yikes. yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I I think of those jerseys and like, not only does it stir up like the bad memories of the play that we watched with those jerseys, but and I want the I want the white helmet with the red standing buffalo and. I would take that as my full helmet, full time helmet. Just me, but I have seen like the Photoshop pictures out there with the with the red helmet, and 
with stuff yeah, on the digs. Yeah, nice. yeah. yeah, I do yeah. like that too. But it, well, it brings me to a deeper point with the NFL of like, why can't we just have several alternates, you know? Yeah. You know, I I mean, I, I'm not entirely sure what this means, but if you're like a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan, you're like one step closer to getting that creamsicle. Give me the creamsicle. Uh, you know, with Buccaneer the pirate with yeah, like I, if I was a Buccaneers fan, that's what yeah, I want. And that's and, what I want. That's and so this cool. goes beyond me being a Bills fan. This is just like for the NFL as a whole. I'm thinking like mm-hmm. the navy blue and orange Broncos with like the the bucking yeah. Bronco with the laser yeah, shooting. Like give me all those old schools, Bronco. but like let me rotate it on a week to week basis, like. Oregon does it in college football, and I, I understand, like, they have whatever thing going on with Nike that they can do it, but why not in the NFL? Just put some awesome jerseys out there. Put some awesome helmets. I hope Amen. this is, like, the benchmark yeah. that starts the trend, you know? Right, right. I and want more. It's funny that you mentioned Oregon because I was looking for some Jordan 6 retros, and they referenced how they was, were kind of, like, recycled from – uh, a Oregon special okay. shoe, basically. They just basically took the O symbol off and like put, put them out for one hundred ninety dollars. People were buying them. <laughs> um, moving on, we're gonna add another person to the list of ailment. This one much more severe. Brian Cox Jr. He went down with a leg foot injury, uh, requiring assistance from teammates, and t- he basically had to get carted off the field. And you kind of mentioned that on last week's episode but we really got into it uh we'll we'll get into it now and the bills then signed eli unku and nazir jones in the meantime so i think they're more like placeholders i I don't really see much happening out of this and it's unfortunate what happened to brian cox jr and it looks kind of serious as he posted some photos of him on his social media account, I believe on Instagram, where he's saying, the caption's like, pray for me, while he's taking a selfie in surgical gear on, like, a hospital bed. Clearly, like, getting carted into surgery. Like, it, it was just like, yikes. Like, what what, what, what possibly could have happened? So hopefully it's something too serious. Um and as I mentioned to you before, you know, these signings didn't really move the needle for me. And as a result, I don't think either of them will make the team. But we'll see. Yeah, I'm think? in the same place as you. Um, I, I feel like we had roster spots to fill out, so we did. Um, what I found interesting, and I'm double-checking to make sure that I'm not wrong here. I know um, Eli Anku is more of a nose tackle. And I, be- no, that, and I believe that right. uh, Nazir Jones also is a defensive tackle. Right, yeah. So they're both more nose tackles, and Brian Cox Jr. was a defensive end. So for me, this kind of speaks more to, yes, Brian Cox Jr., hate to see it. You know, he's had a couple of good camps with us, and I feel like he was kind of one step away from latching on somewhere else that was wasn't as deep as our team and maybe he could you know get some action make a little noise but what i found interesting in the moves after that is we brought in some defensive tackle versus some defensive end um competition um so i i think that speaks more to where we stand at defensive tackle that they're still kind of looking at can we upgrade there now, do I think either of these guys make the team and make that impact? No. But I think that kind of adds an interesting layer to it as as to uh, where the team's looking to upgrade. Right, right. That's a good point, and um, that, that's a little oh, that's a little bad on my part. I, like, completely overlooked that. So good job on you Thank for you. catching that. And... All in all, I think you and I both agree. You hate to see injuries mm-hmm. on this team, especially such a super deep team. And thankfully it wasn't on, you know, I mean, 
thankfully it wasn't like Josh Allen. Not to say like, oh, you know, it's okay that some this guy got hurt as opposed to, you know, this guy. But, you know, just in general, we don't want to see anyone get hurt. And it's unfortunate. We hate to see injuries, but you know who we hate more, Justin? This list of people that we're about to talk about? <laughs> yes, yes. And we're going to dive into the main uh, segment of this episode. And that's... The most hated Bills, in Justin and I, uh, Justin and R's opinion, hate's a very strong word. And at the end of the day, I don't actually hate any of these players for who they are. Uh, like for like, I don't hate these players as people. I just it it was just clear that the marriage between Buffalo and these players just didn't work out. And I I don't want to see him in a Buffalo Bills uniform ever again. Even if <laughs> you know it just it just didn't work out. So I guess I'll kick off this list, and I'll start with Stefan Gilmore. It's clear he didn't want to be here in the first place. And when I think about Stefan Gilmore, I just think about when he got drafted, right? Remember that blank face? <laughs> that, he, that, he, that he was showing when he was um, getting drafted in the handshakes, and he was just like... Uh, Buffalo, why do I got to go there? And uh, then you kind of started seeing it, right? He didn't, he started not showing up to OTAs, was getting late. He, his effort on the field was starting to decline. And I'll never forget when he was, when he signed with the Patriots and said, now the world can see what he can really do. It's just like, What? Like, damn, dude. Like, I don't know. It, it, Stephon Gilmore, definitely uh, low, definitely one player I, I didn't, I don't want to see back. He's great. He's great at what he does. But I just don't, I just don't like him as a Buffalo Bill. Yeah, he's the type of player where I don't have the same hatred as you, but I completely understand where you're coming from. For me, a, a player like that is like, I'm this top flight player on a top flight defense and like, what are we doing? Getting seven, eight wins. Cause we can't figure out the rest of the organization. Um, so I didn't hate him as much at the time. I was, I was fine with him leaving, you know, when he's getting top cornerback money, it, it doesn't make sense to bring him back on a team that's going nowhere. Mm. Um, but where I, where I kind of realized how much I didn't want him back in my organization is, when he was kind of sitting out there with, in free agency, you know, we're wondering if New England's going to pay him or not and all that. And then you start seeing the rumors of, well, could he reunite with Buffalo? I was like, no, I don't want him back here. No. Like, we moved on. We carried on. We have our number one. I don't want to pay him anything. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of dawned on me. I was like, I do have that hatred for Stefan Gilmore, you know? Yeah. I didn't know I had it until then. Right. And... I'll kind of, I don't know if I ever told you this, but so I used to work at the melting pot in Buffalo and I'll never forget this day. So Stefan Gilmore comes in on a busy, busy Saturday and I'm working the bar and he comes in with his girl and his kid and he and the owner is like right next to me and I, I'm like, you know, jaw dropped like. You're Stephon Gilmore. And he's like... They're like, don't go talk to him, Andrew. He just wants to be a person right now. <laughs> and they, and he's like, can I get a table for three? Quite literally that monotone, low. And he had that draft draft, uh, draft face. You know, just kind of like blank-like. And the media face that he always gives is just like dead fish. And then the owner was just like, no, I'm sorry. And I remember me and a couple of other coworkers came up to him. I was like... Dude, what are you doing? He was like, "What? Who is he?" He was like, "That's Stefan Gilmore." He's like, "Who's that?" Like, well, he didn't like, make a reservation. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, he definitely didn't make books. a reservation. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if you, if I was, if I was that guy, I'd be like, clear, like, hey, if it were up to me, I'd be like, hey, I know you guys are eating everything, but you got to move. Like Stefan Gilmore and his girl and his kids, they got to eat right now. <laughs> but. He's How, on a schedule. Right, right. Who, who's on your list? Who's number um, one? On, well, 
in no particular order, but like. Give so, me a name. I've talked about him in the past on this show, Aaron Maven. Mm. Again, you kind of you kind of mentioned it before. Nothing to do with him as a person or anything. I don't I don't know him, um, but for me, this was like in my formative years of like getting into the draft, and you know, even at the time. It was like I didn't know these players coming out. I didn't follow mock drafts, all that stuff that, you know, I wasn't really up to date on the players coming out. But I saw this linebacker drafted from Penn State. He was undersized, blah, 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 the whole scouting report. And at that time in my life, he was the type of player where it was kind of like, well, these GMs know what they're doing. And what was he, picked 11, 12, something like that. And I was like, let me check out his tape. And I watched his tape, and I was like, I'm not excited for this guy. But, again, you know, they're professional GMs. They know what they're doing. Mm. Went on to have, like, zero production in Buffalo. Pretty sure he didn't get a sack until we cut him, and he went to the Jets, and he got, like, one sack. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard it. I don't know if any of our listeners have heard it. I think I played it for you. I... I know of the man. I've never seen him play before, but I I hate the man for you. Okay, so when we're done here, <laughs> you have homework. homework. You have to you have to listen to us. You have to find it on YouTube. It is in the depths of YouTube right now. I listened to it again just to confirm how terrible it was. Okay. He wrote a rap song when he got drafted called Ew. "Maven Mayhem." And I'm not going to do it with the melody, but it was something like uh, Maven Mayhem, quarterback Craven, defensive Wes Craven. And and it was just one of the worst pieces of music I've ever heard. This guy thinks he's Cole Beasley or something. It was, it, it was bad. Right. It goes on just worse than that. Um, but what I also don't like about that is... You know, again, nothing about him as a person, but you know, we put it, we put hindsight into it. I drew up a list of some notable first round picks that went after him. Uh, Brian Arakpo went after him, same position. Went on to have a pretty nice ten year career. Uh, some other fun names: Malcolm Jenkins, probably a first ballot Hall of Famer. Hmm. Uh, we got. Brian Cushing, Michael Orr. They made a movie about that guy. Huh. Clay Matthews. Well. I know I, it's hindsight, but. Yeah, you know. Clay you, Matthews, you know? Yeah, but like you said, it's hindsight and different regime. We're, we're in a better spot now, but right. we can definitely hate that regime for making that move. I hate that regime for so many <laughs> reasons. But we'll, we'll carry on. Yeah, you know who. I personally don't like speaking of regimes. Oh, Rex Ryan. It. He I was on. He oh was my on my God. list, but we said players. You went off script on me. But I yeah, know, he was on my list. I really did not like that hiring. Like I really, really, really hated that hiring. I, I'm. I was ecstatic. You know, the Bills were staying in Buffalo. The Bagulas bought them, and. There was, there were, you know, it, it was a big time. One Buffalo came a thing like, hey, the Sabres and the Bills are now under the same ownership. The one Buffalo video got released. Everything is going to be great. Chris Berman is like the spokesman for one Buffalo. And then we hired Rex Ryan. And I thought to myself, like, this is bad. And I'll never forget my friend who lives in Virginia. He was like, oh, I love this hiring. I'm like... Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get some eyeballs. We'll get impressions. The Bills will definitely get impressions, but it's not the good kind, you know. It's it's just going to be... he He's a clown. Like, you remember when he fired Greg Roman, Roman to save his own hide about three weeks into the season? After he fired... Or after he hired his brother to yeah. run the defense with him. Yeah, that didn't work. Which wasn't good. Newsflash, it didn't work out. Yeah. And, and Greg Romans went on to have a good career. Yeah, and how? Like, think about that team that we had defensively too. 
we had a top well with um oh jim God. schwartz jim schwartz didn't we have a top three defense uh, top uh, three or top four three, something. top five something like that it was good and then he imploded it he imploded it like i and on top of that he he just didn't run the team very well there i just personally don't think there was a lot of respect for him he was just trying to be buddy buddy with everyone at the ping pong pool table inside of the locker room all that other stuff and he getting his tattoo recolored to be a bills guy and riding the uh tandem bicycle with his brother through uh through the uh through the park in buffalo it, it was all just dumb it was all just my, sh- shtick i'm just like i you're hyping us up, but you're doing nothing, actually. Why don't, instead of changing the tattoo color, when changing your uh, ta- uh, color of your tattoo, why don't you hit the playbooks, damn it. Like, <laughs> that's all I was thinking about. I, I really don't like Rex Ryan. I, I, I'm done with my rant. So, I got a couple things on Rex Ryan. First of all, uh, I have the embarrassing admission that I was excited for Rex Ryan. Oh my God. When they hired him, and you know, you, you had this these new owners, and they had this defensive-minded genius, and all that, blah blah blah. And it fell off for me real quickly. And I think where he lost me was like when he wrapped his truck with oh, the yeah. the full Bills wrap, and I was like, wait a minute, none of the other coaches are doing this. This isn't necessary. And, uh, sorry about that. Sorry, you lost me for a second. Oh, so, good. like, he did all that, and it was, it was all this sideshow stuff, and I was like, why are we, why are we talking so much about Rex? Like, let's talk about football. Mm-hmm. So, like, since then, he's become, he's become my, my answer to, you know, whenever people tell me about, like, Oh, well, I never see the bills on ESPN and the national media is not talking about us. I'm like, the last time we did that experiment was Rex Ryan. Mm -hmm. ESPN couldn't stop talking about us when Rex Ryan was out there with his press conferences and all that. I, I I could do a full hour on the hatred that I grew for Rex Ryan. I have to have the embarrassing admission that I was fully on board with him at one point. But I'll give a free plug here. Joe Marino did a fantastic show. He did a full roundtable discussion. Um, he brought in a couple other guys, uh, Greg Thompson. Uh, the other guys are slipping my mind right now. But they they went through like their full life cycle of Rex Ryan as a coach. If you haven't heard it, anybody listening, if you haven't heard it, check it out. It's fantastic. Because there's so many guys that know so much about football that loved Rex Ryan and then realized what happened, and it was bad. <laughs> right, right. Moving on the list, Justin, who do you got next? Uh, this one doesn't really seem fair, but T.O. Terrell Owens? Terrell Owens. What? He stopped by for a cup of coffee, and he uh, maybe he shouldn't be on my list, but I hated T.O., Oh, you hate him as a person or a player? No, I I love T.O. as a player. I don't know him as a person. I think he's one of the all-time greats. But just, like, for this organization, he was just kind of like the embodiment of what regime after regime after regime tried to do. And it was like, bring in this person that's supposed to be your savior and or... What face can we get out there that will sell tickets this year? Hmm. And it was just, for me, it was like, he was kind of set up to fail. He had Ryan Fitzpatrick. They did some good things together, but it, it was like we had this whole team that was struggling. You know, this is this is mid-playoff drought, and we bring in a Hall of Fame receiver at the tail end of his career. And it was just a mess to me. You know, we had, what was it, uh, Byron Brown giving him the keys to the city. The dude hadn't even played a snap yet. I think this one's more on the organization for me. I was going to say. I do like T.O. as a player, despite all his antics and all whatever. 
that mm -hmm. stuff doesn't bother me as much. But when I put it all together and, and I just think about T.O. on the team, I'm like, that was a joke. That It's another one of the, well, ESPN talked about us. Well, we were a sideshow, so. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I definitely understand what you're saying, but I think – I think you, I think maybe you were more upset with the regime's decisions to consistently bring in players over and over of T.O. like, like caliber, you know, thinking it, it mainly band-aid fixes when realistically it needed to be a straight tear down, kind of like what Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean did, but no regime really did that. T.O.'s taking the blame today. You scapegoated the man. Don't come find me, T.O. I respect you. I like T.O. Actually, I saw a video of him on uh, Instagram still burning some defensive backs who are like a third of his age. And oh, I'm like, he well, could suit up today and be productive. Yeah, probably. See, like, Anyways, moving on the list, I'm going with Richie Incognito. And this man was something else. <laughs> you know... Real gutsy signing, and he played actually very well, very well, pro bowler if I'm not mistaken. And then, you he know, he kind of clubs. Yeah, yeah, the clubs, and then he just kind of went off the deep end. You know, you, you, you remember, you remember when he, the demand that he made in the off season. He went in. His father like passed away. And then he went into the morgue and was like, I want my father's head, basically, you know, yeah. for for religious purposes. And the, in addition to that, the the racial slander allegations that he's made in the past and the videos that have surfaced, surfaced, it just didn't, it just didn't add up to me. And at that point, I was like, all right, Richie, you got to go. And then the Bills ultimately released him. And now he's in Oakland. Well, was in Oakland. Yeah, Richie was a really weird one for me because when it happened, I hated the signing because of all all the racial stuff that was around him, and it was, you know, quote unquote hazing and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. That went well beyond hazing. I didn't like it. Yeah. Um, as a player for the Bills, he was actually pretty great for. Yeah, no. Was it a year or two? And then it was just like that off season where things got really weird, and you know, I was like, "This dude's never gonna play again." Oakland signed him, and it, he went on and played pretty well for Oakland too. But right. it, it was really weird. He had he had something where he always taped his hands so they were like basically clubs. Mm -hmm. So it was like um, his reasoning was so he never got called for holding. He said, how can I get called for holding if I got two two mitts, basically? Yeah, he had, like, the E.T. kind of thing. Yeah, so, I mean, thinking I back guess. on it now, like, that should have been weird, like, but I don't, I, he was good for us for a couple of years, and, and then, yeah, it got, it got really weird for a few minutes there. Yeah, it was like a diamond in the rough, and then it was like, oh, wait, it's just rough. Yeah, we kind of <laughs> got out at a good time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, you got the next person? Uh, I'm going to skip this one for now, and I'm going to come back to him. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to Zay Jones, honorable mention, E.J. Manuel. And Zay this, Jones. this one is personal. Okay. Not to do with the players. Not Not to do personal that way. These ones for me were just like... These were like my prime getting into draft years, all that. Like, mm -hmm. I started following college more, so I knew what was coming out. You know, these were all the years where the Bills were terrible. And, you know, by, you know, December, I'm looking at the draft to see who can make our team better. Uh, I let EJ off the hook here because quarterbacks are kind of harder to project in general. So they then, always get over. I mean, realistically, they get drafted super super high yeah and just EJ, because they're quarterbacks yeah and ej was you know touted as this project quarterback blah 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 
got thrust right into action. So EJ gets the pass. Um, I put I put Zay Jones on here because he made me look silly. I got really excited for Zay Jones. His whole scouting report out of college was like, you know, whatever he doesn't have physically, athletically, whatever, doesn't matter. Any ball that comes near him, he's going to catch it. He's that dude. Oh, boy. Uh, got to the NFL, and uh, his biggest problem was drops. So it was I, like... I'm going to interrupt you real quick. Go for it. I think that's because Josh Allen broke his hands. It might have been. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he... I'll let you continue, but uh, no, his I, hands were long broken before I, that. I don't remember what team it was against, but I remember like this rainbow deep ball to Zay Jones. Carolina Panthers. He had to come back for a little bit, but mm-hmm. like he made the right adjustment and everything, and like he still did a little bobble to like a punt. And so Zay Jones for me was like Anybody and everybody that would listen to me talk, I was like, Zay Jones is the next coming in the NFL. Like, he's going to be that dude. He made me look foolish. So are you talking about the Tyrod Taylor to Zay Jones where we were trying to basically get the first down uh, to win the game, a touchdown to win the game, or are you talking about Josh Allen's first start at home when – he did that long rainbow pass. Both of them are really long passes, but Josh Allen tossed Zay Jones this pass, and he had to come back, and it basically hit him off the chest, and he was like, doop, doop, doop. That one. That one? Oh, yeah. That, that was, was disturbing. Yeah, I was like, that. I was like, eh, a little underthrown, but, you know, it. he, he came but back it, for it. But if it was thrown where it was supposed to be, it was in double coverage, so, like, you made the right adjustment on the ball, like, just catch it. Yeah. And it wouldn't be as big of a knock on him if, like, that's who he was. But his scouting report was like, I will catch everything that is anywhere near me. And then seeing, like, this backyard football pass right in his hands, and he's like, I don't know if I want it. Right. He did have that one really sweet time where he got up levitating. That was cool. Yeah. That's that's his highlight as a bill. But... Similar to Aaron Maben, I compiled a little list here of hindsight. This one is way worse of people that could have bolstered our offense. In the same year, we drafted him in the second round. You had Curtis Samuel go in the second round. Juju Smith-Schuster went in the second round. Cooper Cup in the third round. Chris Godwin in the third round. Kenny Galladay in the third round. Uh, D.D. Westbrook, Josh Reynolds in the fourth round, Isaiah McKenzie in the fifth round, David Moore in the seventh round, Isaiah Ford in the seventh round. Those are all players that have been more productive in the NFL. Now, I yeah. know you say hindsight's twenty twenty, and we miss a couple times, right? Delvin Cook in the second, Joe Mixon in the second, Alvin Kamara in the third, uh, John U. Smith in the third, Jamal Williams in the fourth, Marlon Mack in the fourth. George Kittle in the fifth. Aaron Jones in the fifth. We could have hit on any one of those. Yeah. And, that, I mean, you're talking about a really strong draft out, outside of him and another yeah. uh, another play that we'll get to outside of <laughs> in, in, the, in the next couple of minutes here. Juicy. But in general, that draft, I mean, we missed on two players big, big time, but. Outside oh, of that, we, I know where you're going. You know, we, we, we did pretty well after that draft. Yeah. You know, that was the turning point for sure. Anyways, before I give any other spoilers away, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to pick things up on our most uh, hated Buffalo Bills list here. And I'm going to kick things off with Nathan Peterman. <laughs> Boy, did I have high hopes for this guy. The draft people were praising him, saying, like, he's the most Tom Brady-like player in this draft because he got picked up super late, I think, like, in the fifth or sixth round, uh, the fifth. And then I'm pretty sure he did, like, a Dude Perfect-style video where he would do, like, these ridiculous 
Im almost impossible like precision throws and i was like oh man this guy this guy does well in training camp and preseason i got big hopes for him and boy was i wrong i picked this man up in oh, fantasy football cuz i i just I was in a paid league too and i just picked him up cuz i was like all right whatever i i I don't really have anyone at quarterback because my quarterback is Carson uh, Palmer and he's hurt right now. So I'm going to throw Nate Peterman in against the Chargers and see what Ooh. happens. You that lost that week. killed me. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I did. And I got a lot of crow for that. Uh, have you just, recovered from that? I, I don't think I ever will. <laughs> I don't hate Nate Peterman, but I will never advocate for him to be in a Buffalo oh, Bills God, uniform no. again. And they gave him all the chances in the world, right? All the chances. Sean McDermott were like, nah, we love Nate Peterman. We love Nate Peterman. And after like the 18th pick, they were just like, all right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we Time tried, man. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, Nate Peterman is my poster boy for uh, anybody that has anything to say about Colin Kaepernick. Uh, Nate Peterman's still in the league. Uh, he has done... Oh, my God. I remember I, w I was kind of in the same boat as you. At, I remember I was at the preseason game. I think it was against Carolina. And Nate Peterman came out oh, slinging. Yeah. He was like... Touchdown to Bet Calvin Benjamin. He like started 5-for-5. Yeah. Five five. He was throwing back corner of the end zone fades. Like He was balling. And, you know, when when uh, McDermott benched Tyrod Taylor for Peterman, I was like, you know, we know what we Here know we what go. Tyrod is. So, like, let's see what Peterman's got. He was lighting it up. Whew. Wrong. Never yeah. let me scout a quarterback ever because <laughs> that was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm like I, I would consider I'm one for one because I really like Josh Allen and I want. I was wrong there too. The most out of the draft, so we'll see. Anyways, who do you got next? Mm. I got. I got one more after this. I got one. one more after this too. I got the one right now that I I don't even want to talk about. <laughs> you know you how I feel about him, Fonte Davis. I thought you loved him. Oh, yeah. He's my favorite. <laughs> now, at Man. Vontae Davis, he gets a little extra angst because I was excited for him as a player coming into the team for, you know, what he'd done in his career at cornerback. Um, but his departure from Buffalo, it, it just as a fan of sports, as a person that's done sports and team activities my whole life, the way he went out is just flat out lame. It's flat out unacceptable to me. Um, Disrespect. He said something about, you know, he got in there and, you know, he knew he wasn't at the NFL level anymore. Fine. Go talk to one of your coaches and be like, well, my hammy's tight. You know, I can't go back out there. Anything like that. This dude went back to his street clothes at halftime and left. Like, for, for what you just did to all your teammates that you call your brothers and all that mm -hmm. crap that goes into it, all that, leaving them with the questions to ask after the game, the position you put them in, all that. Like, I I don't know if you have anything to expand on it, but that's really all I have to say. Mm -hmm. that just flat out, as a professional athlete, as an athlete at any level, that's just... That's Bush League. It's it's lower than Bush League. It's just it's dirt. Like you know, I don't know. I I, I remember when that happened and the little little caption on the screen, like Vontae Davis retired at halftime. It's just like, is that a what? typo? Like, retired? Like, yeah, literally. And I I thought to myself, like, of course, a player would retire midway through a game and it has to be bills yeah it's got to be bills related like of course yeah. i don't know that that really irked me the wrong yeah, way that one wasn't <laughs> cool with me that i'll i'll never let that one go 
Yeah, and then he did that FanDuel uh, commercial. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but he basically says, you know, it started off like, like, hey, you know, I, I knew I didn't have a right and all this other stuff. And I don't really remember how the commercial goes, but he spins it to like, so that's why I used FanDuel because I can substitute people in like real quick or something like that. And I was like, you piece of shit yeah. <laughs> you garbage man and he smiled in the video too and i was like how are you happy about that like i i don't know i to me i just thought to myself I was like you just put a target on your back for like cabbage and tomatoes if you ever came through the 716 or western new york area in general only if them veggies like, are I'm rotten. not a fan <laughs> yeah or you know those sweet potatoes that for Hey, I'm just going to let the listeners and viewers know real quick. Justin and I just pick up 40 pounds of some sweet potatoes. $20. Drop it in the comments. Bonte Anybody Diggs. that's got recipes for sweet potatoes, I have way more than I expected. Vontae Davis is going to get easily 10 pounds of those <laughs> to his back if you ever came our way. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll transition into uh, the last Buffalo Bills that I personally don't like. And it's another coach, Doug Marone. I think there was a lot of hype around Doug Marone and he came from Syracuse. He was a Western New York kind of guy. And there was hope that he could turn this regime around and in a way, it om- he kind of almost did, at least started to do it. I think he gave us our first winning season in, like, forever, right? That I think about his first year as a coach, he benched EJ, put in Kyle Orton. And then I think about that Detroit game where uh, we ended up winning on Marquise Goodwin's, like, dumb, deep throw. And then, oh, God, I'm just thinking about other plays. Oh, the, the last second touchdown against the Vikings. Uh-huh. Sammy Watkins, the out route. I was, at, uh, I was at a water park in Batavia for that. I remember it very well. I, I remember I was in I was at the Steer on off Main Street in oh, Buffalo. God. And these two two twins were like, you guys, like, who weren't? Bills fans. They were Eagles and a Washington fan. I was like, how are you guys That's brothers? Weird. How are you guys twins with like with you guys being Eagles and Washington fan? And why are you here? Like <laughs> I have a, a lot of bar. questions. Yeah, and they were like and then I, I was with a group of uh, my friends and they were like, Hey Andrew, it's not looking good for the Bills. What do you think? I was like, You gotta believe like but I said, We got Bill Kyle Eve Orton, and, we got Dan Carpenter yeah. and Sharon Whiskey on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And then the super, oh, the pass to, uh, what's his name? Uh, 7-Eleven. Chris Hogan. Why can't it? Chris Hogan. And then the out route to Sammy Watkins. It was just, I, I, I never, and the twins were like, right before that pass got thrown, they were like, you guys can't even beat the Vikings. Because they were like terrible, terrible that year. And the place like, erupted. we just did it. We're going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're going, we're going, we're going nine and seven. <laughs> uh, cl- Any, anyways, the reason why I don't like Doug Marone a lot is because when there was hope, because he got the most out of a super old quarterback, right? I I started believing in this team and this coach, and then he is like. I'm going to leave. All right, I'm going to head out. <laughs> and I was like, That what? SpongeBob meme. What do you mean you're going to leave? <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then he, he he leaves and eventually signs to be an offensive line assistant. Uh, assistant offensive line coach in Jacksonville. Now, we all know that he eventually he worked his way up and became the interim head, interim head coach and then became the head coach and then got fired. But... In general, I I just remember thinking to myself, like, this is the Von, I'm 
you know, this is before Vontae Davis, but this is like Vontae Davis vibes. You know, that, that's what that gave me. You're going to give up the first year into your job, take, take the money, you dip. And then Kyle Horn dips too after that. But to be fair, he was like, hey, man, I'm, I wasn't expecting to play that much. I thought I was going to help this EJ I thought guy. I was just going to stand oh. here. Yeah, doing dip on the sideline. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you saw that and that Detroit game winner. <laughs> I have a I have a land <laughs> with Dan I have a long standing joke with one of my buddies. I I said it already oh, that uh, Kyle Lurin would come to the sidelines and um, Dan Carpenter would would pass him his whiskey back and he'd be like, "What are you doing here?" And be like, "You got to go kick a field goal." And he'd be like throwing his <laughs> cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> ripping out the dip because he's gonna yeah. be on tv yeah those guys and they got caught well i i know for sure um kyle orton after yeah. the detroit game got caught putting a big ass thing of dip in his left i was like dude it's just them two them two just looked like some good old drinking buddies and honestly yeah. at the time i loved it i was like these dudes are just out there having a blast and now yeah with the team we have, I'm like, that's what I was excited for. <laughs> <laughs> and the head coach, yeah. too. So, yeah, for all those aforementioned reasons, that's why Doug Marone made yeah, the list. And this, your your go Marone go is go. my T.O. Where, where this is more of an organization thing, where, like, you gave your head coach this exit clause with no repercussions. So, like... How much can I blame Doug Marone if it was like, hey, we're still going to pay you if you leave and you can make money elsewhere at the same time. And it's like... That's how desperate we were to get Yeah, before. and it's like, I can make this salary plus this salary. Like, I, I don't know. The, the league is really complicated and, like, jobs don't last long. So he kind of just, like, was like, maybe, maybe this won't work out forever. And I'm going to take these two paychecks at the same time. So, yes, I hate him <laughs> for the way he left Buffalo. We had, like, this glimmer of hope, and he was just like, peace. But at yeah. the same time, like, right. I don't blame him. Yeah. No, I blame him. <laughs> now, who, who do you got on uh, your I last? saved this one for last. Uh, on your, who's the last? I don't know, who's the last I don't know if anybody caught list. this jersey. Impromptu setup. I caught you it. You caught it at first glance. I caught it. It's 29. Now you might be thinking Josh Norman, Kevin Johnson. I don't know. Carlos Williams. Oh. Carlos Williams hurt me. Now this dude burst onto the scene with the Buff Buffalo Bills. His oh, rookie, yeah. rookie year. Uh, 5.6 yards per carry. He had seven rushing touchdowns, added two more receiving. And it was like, who's this guy that's getting limited touches just blowing up? Comes in the next year. Actually, before that, my brother asked me for Christmas what I want. If, if I were to get a Bills jersey, who would it be? And I was like, Carlos Williams. Like, this, this dude's the future. I got the jersey. This is like the fourth time I've ever worn it. Comes in the next year overweight. Violates the league's subs substance abuse policy. Gets suspended four games. Cut. Gets cut by the Bills. He ends up latching on with the Steelers. Violates the substance. On the practice squad. Yeah. Violates again. Gets a 10-game suspension. And, and ends up having... A, not even a two-year career with the in the NFL. I was so excited for this player. It was like every time he touched the ball, it was like, are we going to score a touchdown right now? This is my guy. Here we are with a jersey that sits in the closet. It's, uh, it's unfortunate. <laughs> Because I had a lot of high hopes for him, too. And I remember when he, I think it was maybe against Miami. And the announcer was like, oh, my God, he runs like a deranged rhino. And I thought that was so funny, but it was so accurate. This man was 
on a rampage when the yeah. ball was in his hand, and he was fucking people yeah. off. And I'm, if I'm, if memory serves me correct, I'm pretty sure he came from Florida State University, and he had he he was a promising as uh, prospect, you know, but it just uh, didn't work out, and it was all self inflicted, which is why I don't feel bad for him. And that's why I hate you him. know, like you could have not eaten that extra uh, thing, <laughs> or you could have. He was hanging out with Kelvin Benjamin, smoked that eating Popeye's biscuits. I know, but he just he just kept going, and that's unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this week's episode. Next week, we're gonna do the "Would You Rather" episode pretty uh, self-explanatory but we'll definitely explain it next week in further detail go ahead and like comment subscribe and review our podcast as well as um, other amazing shows that you can find on the belt and buffalo network and if you have someone that we didn't mention in this episode please feel free to reach out to us because we would love to talk about it on next week week's episode or just to you on a one-on-one in general we just love having discussion we're always looking for a good guest on the show, so as I mentioned to you before, reach out to us on our social media platforms if you're interested by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast. Justin, where can the people find you? You can find me on social media at jgods22. Um, like Andrew said, if you, if you have an, anybody that we left off this list you want to talk about, send it our way. Uh, leave Scott Norwood off it for me. There's a lot of things that went into that game, and... Uh, he was a great player for the Bills. If you want to talk right. about that, we can talk about that too. Sure. Um, anyways, and you can always find me on social media platforms by searching 2 Changs. That's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. Everyone, uh, stay cool out there. If you're in the western New York area, it is a scorcher. Sorry for uh, being a day late or so, but we're, we're back. And as Go always, Bills. go Bills.